الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أهبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to the second lesson in our series uh, about the <coughs> the signposts of Tawheed by our Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr Hafiz Allah Taala. The Sheikh, he begins with the first issue that he outlined in his introduction. And he said, the first issue, the characteristics of Tawheed and its virtues. The characteristics of Tawheed and its virtues. So these are the uh, traits of, of Tawheed and the virtues of Tawheed. The first issue, he said, know that Tawheed has many distinguishing characteristics and a number of virtues which indicate its lofty station and elevated status. I will indicate here 10 of them. So here the Sheikh is gonna talk about 10 of the uh, virtues of Tawheed. He said, first, it is the objective for which we were created and brought into existence to actualize as the statement of Allah, the Almighty says, I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So our purpose is, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We always have to remind ourselves of that. And for me, one of the ways that I do that is I love to come out into creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is all creation, whether you're in the mall or whether you're out here. But here you see a lot of the the uh, the ayat, koniya, uh, the, the, the signs in the natural creation, the natural environment, which show you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Azza wa Jal, is the only one worthy of worship. So this right here, for me, it, 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 it impacts me. It, it, it's a reminder for me. It's a comfort in my heart, and it reminds me and makes me stronger in my da'wah. When I become weak, when my sins begin to overwhelm me, these things like this remind me that my purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Okay? That doesn't mean sitting in the masjid only or, or just reading the Quran only, but it means also going out in the creation. It means practicing the Tawheed as we're going to see in the treaty as the Shaykh is going to mention uh, in its rightful place. So he says, uh, and, and so that ayat, it means, and Allah uh, Tabarak wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and I created man, I did not create mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Why did Allah create us? To worship him and him alone. The meaning of except they should worship me is so they can single me out in Tawheed. Therefore, Tawheed is the objective for which we were created in this life. Allah the glorified and high did not create us in play, nor did he leave us aimless and without purpose. Rather, he created the creation to worship him. He brought them into existence in order that they may single him out in Tawheed. Sufficient is this as evidence for the greatness of the status of Tawheed and its loftiness, its high station. <coughs> so that I think that's sufficient. We don't need to say anything about that. The second matter. So this is one of the second uh, matters pertaining to the virtues of Tawheed. He said, Tawheed is the focal point of the da'wah of the prophets and messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, meaning every prophet that Allah the majestic and mighty sent, his call was centered around Tawheed and pre predicated uh, upon it. The evidence for this are many. From them is a statement of Allah Azza wa Jal where he says fi kitab al-kareem wa laqad ba'athna fi kulli ummatin rasulin in na'budullaha which is tanibu ta'bud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-aziz. He says wa laqad ba'athna fi kulli ummatin. He said, and verily we have sent among every ummah a, 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 a messenger proclaiming worship Allah alone and avoid uh, or keep away from Tagut, false deities, those worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Wa ma arsalna min qablika min rasoolin, illa nuhiya ilayhi annahu la ilaha illa ana fa'buduni. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Fi kitab al-kareem, And we did not send any messenger before you, but we inspired him saying, La ilaha illa ana. None has the right to be worshipped but, but I, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So worship me alone. Under, look at this. This is Tawheed. This is Tawheed Allah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called all the prophets and messengers to 
gave them this message to deliver to us, to deliver to the rest of mankind, to illustrate, to show us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make ta'deem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Him and Him alone, and understand that, and propagate that, and share that. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Yitzhak al-Kareem, and ask those of your messengers whom we sent before you, did we ever appoint gods to be worshipped besides the most beneficent? Of course, the answer is no. Likewise, Allah, the mighty and majestic, said, And remember who, the brother of Ad, when he warned his people in Al-Ahqaf, which were the curved sand hills in the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula. And surely there have passed away warners before him and after him, saying, Worship none but Allah. The Qur'an is full of Tawheed. So those people who say, where do we find the uh, Tawheed in the Qur'an? You've got to question their understanding of the Qur'an. The warners are the messengers, meaning the messengers before him and after him were in agreement regarding this objective. Worship none but Allah. Therefore, Tawheed was a focal point of the prophets and messengers called due to this, the first statement which the people heard from their prophets and the first for which they began with in da'wah ilallah to Allah, was the call to his Tawheed. So that's where the origin of all the prophets, their messages began. It began with calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship him and him alone. And likewise, in, in our being a part of our objective, following the messengers, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are the best of mankind, that our objective is to follow their sunnah. And first and foremost, sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And like they began, he began his call to the uh, call in the Tawheed. He said, this is because the foundation upon which a religion is built, the example of the religion is like that of a tree, from which is known is that the tree has a trunk and its branches the tree cannot stand except with its trunk. Likewise, the religion cannot stand except with its foundation. And that is Tawheed. The foundation is Tawheed, Ahabatatillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al -kirin, See you not how Allah sets forth a parable? A goodly word as a goodly tree whose trunk is firmly fixed and its branches reach to the sky just as the trunk is cut, the tree will die. The sh this is the Sheikh speaking now. Likewise, if the religion is not predicated upon Tawheed, it will not benefit, it will not have any benefit. And that shows us that if there's shirk contained in your da'wah, if there's shirk coming from your Sheikh, shirk coming from your uh, Imam or whatever, or the ones that you follow, then their da'wah is on batil. It is pure bat batil. There's no benefit. I don't care if it reforms your character, but they're telling you to worship the graves, and they're on all kind of kufr, shirk, and, 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 and ilhad, uh, you know, with regards to the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's batil. It's going to be a source, depending on the level of falsehood and the level of shirk, it can be a source for your hellfire. So you don't want to follow that which calls you to falsehood and uh, any kind of shirkiyat, any kind of shirkiyat practices. That's why we have to know and understand Tawheed to free ourselves from that, uh, <clears throat> from that. And in this regard, <clears throat> the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Al-Anbiya ikhwatun min a'lat, a'lat. Umahatuhum shatta wa deenuhum wahid. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, the Prophets are fraternal brothers. And their mothers are different and their religion is one. They all had the same call, the call to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, To each among you we have prescribed a law in a clear way. He was addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, addressing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, showing that they all had a, uh, they had the same path, which was Tawheed in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they had different sharias, you know, different rulings that were pertinent and relevant to their communities in those specific times. 
We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah bless us with a class with the bat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.